I see inside her. First of all, with respect to the issue of the atheism, I'm talking specifically about people that have voices in their head, which would, you know, be schizotypal personality disorder, I guess, but the fact is, let's face it, that the personality disorder spectrum is not really focused on dealing with that particular type of illness. And it sort of has a category for people that have that and what are the personality issues are that are related to it. Kind of like obsessive compulsive is owned by a different sort of part of the catalog and the obsessive compulsive personality disorder seems to be like, well, what kind of personality traits are related? And you can therefore be one or not the other and maybe it appears like a gradation. Well, look, this is, they're just throwing this stuff together. I'm impressed with how good it's gotten. But it's still just us guessing. We don't know if BPD is even a thing distinct from uh, antisocial personality disorder. We really don't, okay? There's certain clustering, and the statistics are, uh, I don't want to say blurry because there's this discrete nature to the data, but they're confusing. They defy, you know, classical set based categorization. There's blurry and fuzzy and radial properties and you have symptoms from other things and other things. And, you know, like with gang stalking, it's pretty clear to me it's, there's evidence of symptoms all throughout uh, the personality disorder spectrum that play a role. You get into things like voice to skull where their harp is sending things into my skull. That sounds like schizotypal, but again, it doesn't mean it is, depends on the meaning of the word is, is schizotypal. It just means that here is a thing in, paper, in, in reality that follows the pattern of schizotypal. It might be the pattern of cart before the horse or the pattern of uh, a man without a cause. You know, it could be any kind of pattern metaphor uh, from reality. Now, my main issue with Composer is just that this is the internet. As you said, there's reasons that clinically trained people are not getting on here and giving clinical advice so the fact that people would come on the internet for clinical advice in that case is a problem it's the problem and not composers problem now composer has this has is self-aware about it or rather he's been diagnosed with this and has something you know and this category is what seems to fit for him. He's looked into it and it seems to fit the symptoms and as he subjectively experiences them. So, what do you do with the internet? Come get diagnosed? No, we already said that the people that could diagnose you uh, are averse to doing so on the internet. One presumes they go on the internet, but they don't spend their time in public diagnosis, maybe in their own head or in their own subtle way, who knows? But you gave the reasons that that doesn't happen. So we know that doesn't happen. So what does that leave the internet for? Not getting diagnosed, but expressing yourself, exploring. Now, when I see somebody on the internet, anybody, and they say X, Y, Z, I, I hear, I think maybe X, Y, Z. If a guy that says he has a personality disorder is discussing his personality disorder, I think maybe he's a little bit biased, and that's a good thing and it's also potentially a bad thing. It means take everything with a grain of salt. It would be unfair, except for I take everything I hear with a grain of salt. Even the President of the United States, or the whomever, all with a grain of salt. My main objection is that instead of responding to him with the, what you've responded with, and challenged him to bring forth the facts, because you act like he has no facts, and actually, you know, granted, it was her defense team psychologists but, you know, they diagnosed her with BPD. It's on the table. But for internet, not as to use to make a diagnosis, but to discuss the issue in this raw way that we are engaged in, as far as I'm concerned. So you could talk to him the way you talk to me and challenge him. And, and in a way, your video did, but your description said asshole. Your comments say you're the loser. This guy actually has BPD. I value to a certain degree your picture of what the audience of potential people with BPD on YouTube searching for BPD might be like, but that's an imagining. That's an imagination. Composer is an actual human being individual with BPD or diagnosed with BPD. Right. He has discussed the difference between 
a psychopath and borderline in his understanding. He does seem to consider it sort of a, uh, a hidden discovery, a surprise, not mentioned, that there's some borderline involvement. He says there is a situation in life and with abuse you can get maneuvered into to drive you to react. Not because you're seeking out a serial murder, but you keep putting yourself in situations where you act out to that level because of your background. It doesn't mean everybody's going to do it. And I think it's funny because, you know, let's talk about antisocial personality disorder for a second. And the sociopathy. Those guys, it's as if you're fine calling them serial killers. Yeah, that leaves the serial killer well, not usually, right? As far as I understand, there's a lot more people with that, right? And how do you tell these things from avoidance? If people have a certain value system, their antisocial tendency will become into avoidance. Just like a narcissist, you know, raised, uh, you know, like, like propagandized version of raised into thinking a certain thing made you into a good person, might do that, it might be good, all to get their narcissistic a supply and who would ever notice you know we don't really understand all these things and I think we all share parts of all of them and that you know uh, the, the way to avoid this the idea that it's all stigma is to allow the expression of people with those conditions look you might say to somebody oh, I didn't want them to get beat up or shame that person that person deserves to be shamed but if they were diagnosed, you wouldn't say that. Diagnosis is a stigma? Okay, diagnosis is also forgiveness. So, you know, there's both in the common mind right now, in the common mind. And, you know, to be diagnosed, it's like you wouldn't say, go shame them. You would say, oh my God, what can we do considering this person's diagnosis? So this is what got me into this part of the subject of should we diagnose other people and that we're debating with. I take it as obvious. It's netiquette. It's for, you know, 20 years, I 25 years, I know well the netiquette. You don't diagnose people. You take them at face value. And the perk you get is that if they're crazy, you can just go, ah, it's crazy and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to think, maybe he's really crazy. I don't want to push him over the edge. But if you really diagnose somebody in with the understanding type way like not to belittle them in this bigoted ancient way old 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 school but in a trying to understand where they're coming from oh and which might include some tendencies that are you know uh, maybe out of control in them then suddenly you don't say oh they should be shamed you come up with some other solution so you know I think that it is absolutely fine for an individual to say as an individual what he thinks he's discovered. And it is necessary for someone with an opposite position, in this case you, to come along and say, hey, prove that. Hey, that's not what the psychologists say. And then you actually say, hey, I've been trained in this, I'm working in this field. You're the one that carries weight on the internet. Not him, he just raises the issue so that you can say that, so you can make that point. And you can be the comforting one. But I'll be, I think you'd be surprised and are unaware of just how comforting it can be to, to have a perspective that it might look like there's a path to evil to some people, but to other people it's a way of going, holy shit, I'm not near as bad as you know things could be. I'm a good person. I'm glad I have the values to keep me from going in that way. And you know, there's a million kinds of individuals they would all ha want to see something on the internet. If they were really trying to get educated, they'd search like I did just every single person. Now I saw a BPD person that was telling people how to hide their cuts. How's that? I was actually fine because the person then defended themselves and they're like, I'm not saying cut yourself, but there's no reason you have to be shamed in public or whatever. But that is more of a danger, that enablement that you're okay, I'm okay approach, then composer who is saying, listen, get a hold of your shit because it can become bad. He might be wrong. But personally, just in principle, I think, you know, there is that, uh, you know, ability to 
get to the point, whether you're pushed, manipulated, your situation becomes whatever, to become driven to murder and driven to killing. I don't think it's beyond any psychology the brain has in it. The ability to interpret its environment is so dire that you that that all out mayhem violence seems appropriate. And if you have really any sort of personality disorder level of a tendency, you know, possibly brain chemical related, you know, I don't see why you would try to to rule it out. And I don't see why you would try to dump it all on the antisocial people. You know, autistic people don't don't understand emotions. You know, what it's not the end of the world that antisocial people don't understand emotions. They still think about things. They still have emotions that they just are are somewhat um, uh, alien for them to interpret. They have trouble interpreting, and their biology is still producing various reactions to things. You know, they could understand what they're doing. And again, I mean, I'm just asking a question, but I think it's it's the case that most antisocial disor personality sort of people do you know do not become killers. It takes extra, a lot extra, including possibly the will of a person should they get enough information to say Jesus I shouldn't assume what I'm capable of in life I think everybody should look at it that way but mostly I just think if you're gonna argue with him you don't call him an asshole you don't sanction people calling him a loser in your comments you know uh, which to me means you reply to them hey that's uncalled for I mean you don't have to do that but I'm judging based on that kind of thing because here's a real person with this disorder and you're saying well I gotta call him an asshole and let him be called a loser for the good of people like him this doesn't make any sense but um but I do like the way you're discussing the issue you know with me I don't mean to seem too irate about it I'm just sharing the emotional part and I know you, and you have too. I saw a little more subtle and I see the frustration in in the pain and I have too. it comes from my sympathy for these people and also the philosophical analytic issue of the, the threshold of diagnosed or not diagnosed should we diagnose a narcissist a narcissist <laughs> a narcissistic person and then and then treat them differently than we might if they're just an asshole and is it possible for someone to be just an asshole or is all stuff like that dysfunction or do we not get to judge and maybe they just think it's okay to act that way or is there a difference I don't really think there's a difference so ultimately we have to judge it's not okay to act that way it is both not a personality disorder and a personality disorder right like the people that think that's the morally right way to be aggro and self-absorbed they're gonna go that's not wrong okay and there's really no way to prove that but for people who think that's a dysfunctional way to live humans can't live together if we if if, if some of us are going to be that way then we see it as a dysfunction you know, and that's how I see these things but on the other hand I think everybody has these symptoms to some degree they're familiar to me I mean I, I then when I've talked to a lot of people about psychological matters they seem like familiar sorts of uh, symptoms from this personality disorder spectrum so yeah I think we should just be more casual about it we should work on the not making it a stigma enigma kind of thing we should remember that a diagnosis it means that we treat someone with more care and if anything the reason we shouldn't want to be diagnosed is because we shouldn't want to be treated with kit gloves uh, on the other hand um, you know people with a medical condition it's like I've got a cut here don't hit it you know so I think that just calling out asshole and malevolent intentions are obviously not included it's an interesting subject you might be totally wrong it does not reflect on whether the subject is interesting you should take it as an opportunity to, to set the record straight and not to malign uh, in any way uh, interfere with this young man's really uh, admirable uh, recovery, attempted recovery, attempted sharing. Uh, you should try to help to improve that. I don't see how uh, going the you're an asshole route could possibly, possibly do that. So that was my objection. But very good points and thanks for the replies, or the reply in the video.